two very proud footballing nations. It's 40 years since the old Czechoslovakia were crowned European champions, that famous Penenka penalty. It's 20 years since a very good team, including Pavel Nedved, were beaten finalists at Euro 96. And here in 2016, it's Czech Republic against Croatia, who've got a really good habit of finding form on French soil at major tournaments. 1998 in the World Cup, they went all the way to the semi-finals. They have begun here at these Euros with a win. And big, big hopes that Croatia can go further. No red and white Czech jerseys against the Czechs. Croatia are wearing their blue strip and the Czech Republic in white this afternoon. Good conditions here. There are some clouds in the sky, but bright sunshine illuminating down on the playing surface. And half the pitch bathed in sunlight, half the pitch in shade as the two captains go through the formalities with the referee, who's a familiar name, Mark Clattenburg, who takes charge of his second game of Euro 2016, having overseen Italy's win against Belgium in Group E. So Dario Serna, who's extremely experienced, 131st cap for him this afternoon. He's the captain for Croatia. Thomas Rosicki recently departed Arsenal. He is the captain for the Czech Republic. Rosicki's 105th international cap. When he made his debut as a teenager, he was the youngest player to ever play for the Czech Republic. He still is. And you've got to think, if it were not for the injuries Jerry Taggart over the years, how many caps would Rosicki have picked up? He's already over 100. Yeah, that's correct. You know, and as you say, he hasn't really featured for Arsenal in the last couple of seasons, so... You know, there's a question mark over his fitness coming in, but he's. If, if the Czech Republic has a talisman, it's definitely Thomas Ruzicki. And you no, know, they'll be looking for him today to try and dictate the play in that midfield area, to try and get something out of this game. The inclusion of Ruzicki being seen as something of a gamble for the Czech Republic at this tournament, but gamble they must do now in this, their second game in Group D. At the moment, Croatia, top of the group. Spain who play Turkey later also on three points Czech Republic and the Turks both looking for their first points of Euro 2016 Petr Cech with the familiar scrum cap away to our right hand side wearing an extremely luminous bright yellow outfit which certainly attracts the eye when you glance over to that side of the field so the countdown on the big clocks and we get ready to get underway here in Saint Etienne, this is where Iceland pulled off their great performance against Portugal just a few days ago. So underway, Czech Republic playing from right to left as we look down. And ball is played back by Limberski into the penalty area. And Hubnik, Roman Hubnik, the big burly central defender, pumps the ball clear. And veteran Choluka with a header, former Manchester City man at the heart of the Croatian defence. Croatia get possession with Brozovic of Inter Milan tries to send it down the right channel it's put out of play throw into Croatia and they can move into Czech Republic territory nil-nil in the early stages Jerry Taggart yeah you can see straight away what Croatia are trying to do they're pressing the ball high up the pitch here is Brozovic trying to get onto a return just on the edge of the penalty area wouldn't sit up for him they're not the easiest back pass for Petr Cech who has completely sliced his clearance he does get it away but at the expense of a corner I mean Jerry you've played as a defender what sort of a back pass was that? no he's got to get get rid there he's got to play a diagonal ball out of defence over to the far right hand touch line more on that back pass in just a moment corner to Croatia wearing all blue Cerna, he was the man who was crying at the anthem sends in the corner, oh it bounced up in front of Mandukic at the back post, and Petacek takes no chances, and pams it over the crossbar, well I'm sure people would have seen on social media and on the internet uh, in recent days, there's a, a video that's doing the rounds that shows how Petacek trains, and he basically throws a big lump of rubbish in the six yard box in front of him, plastic bottles, all that kind of thing and someone drills in the ball low and of course then at the last minute it hits a bottle and ricochets in a funny direction, and that's how he knows how to, you know, react quickly to save it he needed those reactions there with a terrible back pass that has put the Czech Republic under early pressure here we've not played two minutes yet in Saint-Étienne we await this corner Mark Clattenburg just trying to keep order inside a busy penalty area as here comes the delivery from the far side from Rakitic headed away at the front post 
Uh, by Plashill, who's one of the more experienced players, but back out to Rakitic on the left-hand side, hangs it across, a little bit too high for Hubnik, but he did enough, and it goes out of play, and that will be off Mandzukic for a goal kick to the Czech Republic, and Croatia here starting with intent. Yeah, it's a good start from Croatia, keeping the pressure on from two set pieces, and if you've noticed, Connor, uh, uh, the Czech Republic bringing everybody back from corners inside the box, and Croatia pushing every last defender inside the Czech Republic half, so when the ball does eventually come out, they're picking up the seconds. Tens of thousands of people in here, an awful lot of Croatian fans, hardly any of them wearing the blue that their team are wearing in this game. They are almost all in the, the red and white Czech shirts. Here at the back is Vida. For Croatia, give you a full rundown of the teams in just a moment. This is Strunic on the far side. That's not a great ball, but it comes straight back to him. And then he gives it back in field to Vida once again, and it's all the way back to the goalkeeper, Šubišić. And he's wearing a bright pink Illuminous jersey, and he's just done a sort of Cruyff turned pirouette job that again is, is quite high risk, but is, uh, it almost seems very calm in, in a game of such pressure as this that he was so calm there outside his penalty area, just did a little turn and clear the ball away. Yeah, you can see again what Croatia are trying to do. They're trying to force the ball out, out from the back. The fair play to the Czech Republic, they sort of waited, bided their time to press, and it worked for them, you know, like they sort of made Croatia force the ball out and force them into a mistake so a good pressing from the Czech Republic that's the voice of former Northern Ireland and Leicester City defender Jerry Taggart watching this game with us here in Saint-Étienne the Stade Geoffrey Guichard and a throw in by David Limberski who once had a lone spell at Tottenham but failed to make a single appearance at White Hart Lane here is Kubnik who's back playing in the Czech Republic after spells in Russia and Germany the bearded defender to his right-hand side, Thomas Sivok of Bursaspor. And now the Czechs come forward with Kaditzebek on the right-hand side. But once they get up around the Croatian penalty area, breaks out. Oh, poor clearance. Picked up by Rosicki. Wasn't able to get it under his control. Modric with a more calming touch. And now possession will be brought away for Croatia. But they were almost their own worst enemies there. Here is Limbirski winning the ball back for the Czech Republic and winning a free kick. Yes. He's been fouled by Brozovic. Sorry, sorry, Conor. Yeah, it's getting a little bit feisty now. The first few minutes, high pressure, high pressure from both teams. And there was a nice little ball into the front man there from the Czech Republic. Into La Fata. And it broke in the middle of the park for uh, Luka Modric. And they managed to get a free kick out of this, but it's getting a little bit tasty now, early on in this game. Thomas Rosicki, who's a free agent now after the expiry of his Arsenal contract, standing over this free kick. It's midway inside the Croatia half. Czech Republic playing from right to left as we look down, wearing white. Here comes Rosicki, right-footed into the penalty area. Headed straight up into the air and not quite away yet by Bartle and then it comes back down for the goalkeeper and Shubasic is able to gather it inside the penalty area and he looks to release it quickly and he sends it long and it's controlled by Brozovic and then is he fouled? He is! Free kick to Croatia and they are very much up for this. They are sharp, the clearances are quick, they're picking out their passes, Croatia, in the early minutes. Well, I was just going to say, Connor, that the 21 for uh, the Czechs, Lafata, he looks pretty sharp, lively, always moving around inside the box looking for them little balls but straight away you know the creation of Subasic quick ball down the right hand side of the pitch and 14 Brozovic gets on the end of it and gets taken down so that's good counter attack and play from the creations Mark Clattenburg is, uh, is not happy with how the balls are pumped up and I say balls plural because he, he threw off the first ball uh, the second one that's came on he's given a little squeeze and he's not happy with that either and now the fourth official has brought on a third one. Let's see if this meets the requirements of the Premier League official. Yeah, I think he's happy with that. And it will be a free kick on the right-hand side for Croatia. And Ivan Rakitic of Barcelona will be the man to take it. Busy penalty area. They're all pretty much crowded inside the D. Here comes Rakitic's delivery. Oh, that's a really good ball. Nobody on the end of it. Vida, the defender, was closest. Here he is now with the ponytail. Choluka helps it back behind to Strinch on the left-hand side. And here is Luka Modric. Oh, that's a very good ball to Serna on the right-hand side. Serna, the captain, takes it in on his right boot. Lays in a low pass towards the edge of the penalty area. Badele tries to hit it, but it's straight at Petacek. And the Czech Republic goalkeeper clears it long down the field. And he's looking for Krejci, but that will carry on through to his opposite number and the goalkeeper Shabutsic away to our left. Yeah, again, you can see what the Croatians are trying to do. You know, they're trying to get their full-backs in the game. Both full-backs pushing high and wide early on in the game. If they had one complaint against the Croatians in the last game against Turkey was Mandzukic, 
you know, he, he, he wants early balls into the box because he's an aggressive centre forward. So he wants that early ball. He didn't do that, but here you see him get, trying to get early balls into the box. This is Five Live from the BBC. We've played seven minutes, nil-nil between the Czech Republic and Croatia. Mandzukic in the penalty area, trying to give it back to Rakitic. Then a shot comes in from distance by Badley, and it doesn't have the power on it, and it goes well wide of the target as well. Goal kick to the Czech Republic, but it counts as an attempt. Yeah, again, good play down the side, down the right-hand side. They get the ball back inside. The Badley... And it's a, it's a poor finish in the end, but it, you know it's good build-up play from the Croatians. They're the ones that have settled into this game the quickest. They're using the width of the pitch better than the Czech Republic at the minute. And it's the two full-backs that are causing all the problems down both sides for the Czech Republic. One thing we're missing at this tournament is the bright orange jerseys of the Netherlands. Czech Republic effectively reaching this tournament at the expense of the Dutch. They beat them in qualifying. Czech Republic finished top of that group. And here they are in possession on the left-hand side of defence and uh, it goes out of play off Limbirski and that will be well it will be a throw into the Czech Republic and well, for a moment I thought Mark Klattenberg wanted another ball to be pumped up but no he's happy with the one that we have so Limbirski's throw in controlled on the halfway line by Thomas Rositsky who's got one pink boot one yellow boot as is the, the vogue these days you'd have thought Rositsky's a bit old for that kind of carry on here is Rakitic midway inside the Czech Republic after overloading on the right hand side Brozovic sends in a good cross looking for Mandzukic and it's a diving header by Sivok that clears the ball away it's still nil-nil here in Saint-Étienne Croatia very snappy about things as the throw-in is taken quickly to Modric and he gives it back inside the centre circle to Damago Vida to his left-hand side, Ivan Strunic. Back into Vida once again. He's looking for options, and he just rolls it to the right hand of defence. And veteran Choluka, who plays here despite suffering a head injury against Turkey, he needed three stitches in his head after that, but he, he starts here in no real evidence of any bandage. He did have a, a sort of funny, almost swim cap sort of bandage in that game against Turkey just a few days ago. Yeah, it looked a nasty cut as well, to be fair. Czech Republic nil, Croatia nil. They've not played 10 minutes yet, and the ball goes out of play on the far side for a throw in to Croatia. Ivan Perisic of Inter Milan, the nearest man to it. And Strinch will come forward up from left back to take this throw in. And again, he's not happy with the ball, and he swaps it with the ball boy. This is like Wimbledon. You know, when they're taking a serve and they bounce it and they throw a few away, and let me try a different one. <laughs> We've had more balls than, than passes in this game so far. We've played 10 minutes. Here is Choluka to Vida on the left-hand side. Strinch back into the centre once again. And Croatia, for the first time in the game, just, just holding on to the ball in around the halfway line until Modric tries to send a penetrating ball forward. And that's intercepted by Kadetzebek. And Croatia immediately get it back once again. Here is Brozovic, who started wide right, but continues to creep in field. He floats a pass into the penalty area, too far in front of Perisic, and Petacek comes out for the save. Jerry? Yeah, again, you, you see Luka Modric, he's looking to get on the ball in that deep. Uh, holding midfield area, looking to di dictate the play, looking to dictate the pace of the game, the passing of the game. But that time the Czech Republic dealt with their threat down the middle, instead of them going wide, they tried to play through the middle, and the Czechs, you know, dealt with that threat a bit more easier than they have been doing down down the sides of the pitch. Earlier on today, Italy beat Sweden by one goal to nil. That's in the Republic of Ireland's group. Uh, Republic of Ireland play Belgium tomorrow. Later on this evening, Spain against Turkey full commentary here on Five Live Spain and Turkey in the same group as the two teams we're watching here the Czech Republic and Croatia throw in to the Croatians on the far side out in the sunshine and Ivan Stunic and he throws it infield to Luka Modric who I don't think really was welcoming that and certainly didn't control it Czech Republic uh, intercepts so can they provide something here on the counter-attack not with a pass like that poor ball from Darida goes straight out of play and that just gives possession back to Croatia yeah that was a good opportunity on the on the break there for the Czech Republic but like you said Connor, it was a poor ball from Darida you know uh, 19 who had quite had made a great run down the left hand side and a poor pass giving the ball back to Croatia far too easily good noise a lot of it coming from the Czech Republic supporters at the moment, as Rakitic comes forward for Croatia, playing left to right as we looked out. Mandzukic is pulled out to a position on the right wing. He tries to send in a cross. It comes off Limberski and goes out by the corner flag. But it'll be a throw-in. Throw-in to Croatia. Attacking position down that right-hand side. 12 minutes played. No goals here 
in Saint-Étienne. Serna comes forward, extremely experienced player. And he takes a long run up for this throw in and he gets good distance on it as well. Too high for Mandzukic, headed down by Hubnik. And then the Czech Republic complete the clearance and that goes out for another throw in. There's two balls on the pitch. They're doing this multi-ball sister. Mark Landberg happy for play to continue as uh, the second ball was just kicked back off again by, by Badele. Modric gives it back to Choluka and then he in turn gives it all the way back to the goalkeeper Šubacic. Here is Choluka once again. Right-hand side of defence. Been put under pressure by Rosicki. Who I have to say, you know, for a man who we, we seldom see fully fit and playing for Arsenal, he looks to be running very comfortable down there, making up ground, putting pressure on the defenders as Petr Cech clears the ball away. Um, hotly tipped that both Cech and Rosicki will retire from international football at the end of this tournament. So they will want to go out on a high after uh, losing in the opening game against Spain. And here is a free kick awarded to the Czech Republic and Lederski is going to leave it for Czech to come out of his penalty area to take. So nil-nil here and not exactly setting the tournament on fire so far. No, but it, you know, there's good pressure from both teams and I've actually seen something I thought I'd never see and, uh, from one of these two teams, which was a long throw into the box, aiming for Mandzukic. You know, normally they'll try and build, but play the short throw in, but there you've seen... You know, Croatia launching a long ball into the middle of the 18-yard box, trying to get Mandzukic to flick it on. Now a yellow card for Milan Badley, who has committed a foul midway inside the Croatia half, so he is the first to go on a yellow card in this game. With uh, Actually, sorry, first for Croatia. with uh, Lim First to go on a yellow card in this game. There are players who would be suspended should they pick up uh, a further yellow, but he's not one of those. Limbirski for the Czech Republic, Strinch for Croatia. Um, but Badele the first man to pick up the yellow card in this game free kick is taken into a very crowded penalty area looking for Hubnik difficult one for him to get down by the byline he had Choluka climbing all over him and that goes very harmlessly out for a goal kick to Croatia away to our left hand side nil nil in Saint-Étienne yeah that's a strange free kick for me that Connor. you know he's isolated himself you know Hubnik on, on the left hand side of the 18 yard box and he's got to get an absolutely bullet header to get it back inside the box. He's he's better off just plunking it in there and getting people getting people around him. Just get into the 18-yard box, get a few bodies round, and hopefully try and pick up a second ball. I mentioned during the anthems that Dario Serna uh, was visibly crying, tears coming down his cheek. Uh, his father passed away earlier on in the week. There had been a question, would he uh, need to leave the squad? Would he be able to get involved? So I wonder if... Uh, if that's been part of, uh, of, of his thinking there in the national anthem and, uh, and the emotion that he must have gone through during the week. Well, he's the one causing a lot of the problems at the minute. Ball played forward for Croatia by Choluka, but it won't pick out Mandzukic. Once of uh, Bayern Munich, now at Juventus these days. And Petacek clears it away. And for the second time in the game, a Petacek clearance has gone all the way from his penalty area into the, the other penalty area down the left-hand side. I do like this stadium. I'm pretty sure it's my first time here. Uh, Jerry, what I really like about it is how steep it is. We are very high up, but yet we don't feel like we're far back. It's a very steep-sided uh, stadium here in San Etienne. I think the most of the stadiums have been, uh, have been exactly the same. You know, Nice and Leon. I think they're built exactly the same way. Look, even though you're high up, you're pretty close to the action as regards to being set back. Good atmosphere here. These two Eastern European nations heavily supported in Saint-Étienne. Noise of the moment coming from the, the Czechs away to our right-hand side. Throw in for Croatia. Taken by their captain, Serna. Flicked on, but then away by Hubnik, who's staying very close to Mandzukic. Anytime the ball comes forward towards the Juventus striker, Hubnik is there. And then that looks to be a foul on Krejci, and it is. And it's a free kick to the Czech Republic, 15, 20 yards outside the penalty area, wide on the left-hand side. But this could be a platform for Thomas Rosicki to float one into the box. Yeah, well, there you just seen Cerna getting caught the wrong side. And he was obviously in a, an advanced position. Got caught the wrong side. And he's given away a free kick in a good area. But it's good pressure from uh, the Czech Republic initially because they're not letting Modric now get on the ball. And if they are, then they're pressurising them straight away. 11 men behind the ball for Croatia as it's Krejci who sends it in deep towards the back post. Doesn't touch anyone. And that goes out harmlessly again for a goal kick so it wasn't the in-swinging from Rosicki it was an out-swinger from Krejci but he didn't pick out a teammate yeah well he was aiming for the smallest guy on the pitch by the looks of it <laughs> and uh, 
you know, and that's a few times I've seen, you know, I've seen the big centre half, the number five Hubnik, going for a ball, and he doesn't seem to be able to head it properly. And you know, he's swinging these balls into the box, and I can't see anybody actually going and attacking it, a la Gareth McCauley last night. Fans of Brighton and Hove Albion will be pleased, uh, pleased to hear that Jerzy Shalak is uh, playing in this game. One of two changes for the Czech Republic. Shalak, who joined Brighton in January, scored a couple of goals through to the end of the season for Chris Hewton's team. That's a good tackle by Thomas Sivak for the Czech Republic to set his team in motion down the right hand side. Ball is played over the top, and it is Shalak who went sprinting after that. He's put a sufficient pressure on the centre half Vida to force that ball out and it will be a throw in to the Czechs attacking position for them down the right hand side well that's twice now that's twice now one on each side one on the left and one on the right and as soon as they win the ball back they've got the forwards players looking to stretch the game in behind and now you know what nearly came off for them but they've got a throw in on the far side of the pitch which Kadetzebek will take the right back it's only a few paces from the corner flag that the Czech Republic are attacking he throws it down to Darida, tries to give it back to Kadetza back, but Croatia able to nip in and clear the ball away. And then Hublik lunges in on Mandzukic, and Mandzukic manages to get the ball. He's not able to turn it into an attack par se, but he gives it back to Modric, who will do now by spraying it to the right-hand side. This is Dario Serna. Over the halfway line come Croatia. Plenty of supporters available as well as Perisic comes across to sit on this right-hand side. Croatia happy to hold on to the ball and retreat to the halfway line and this is Choluka to Vida and the possession very much at the moment in Croatia's favour they've had over 60% of the possession so far ball played forward to Mandzukic with the bright yellow boots controls it with his back to goal he's about 20 yards outside the pedal area good work from Mandzukic to bring Serna into play on the right hand side Serna was really able to steady himself sends in the crock Sivak though with a diving header clears it away Limbirski completes the clearance but can't find a teammate here come Croatia again they're enjoying a good spell here Luka Modric to the edge of the pedal area to the right hand side to Dario Serna hangs it across deep towards the back post too high for Brozovic of Inter Milan but it will be kept in play by Strunic on the left hand side he sends it back in Mandzukic up to it ahead of Petacek, goalkeeper scrambling, fortunate that the ball went back outside the penalty area, but here it comes back into the mix once again, a soft header down by Perisic, is easily gathered by Petacek, but I'll tell you, his heart would have been beating there, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Yeah, he's got to hit a lot a little bit, it's come back and hit him on the head, but again, great build-up play from Croatia, both full-backs playing as wingers in the opposition half, and every time the ball's coming in, they're picking up the second balls, they're able to re retain possession and put another dangerous cross into the box. This time, Czech's got away with it. Yeah, Czech was backpedalling, uh, running away from his goal. He wasn't able to get his fingertips to it. And Mandzukic did head it, and when he came back, it had hit Czech on the face. So very much a let off for the Czech Republic, who have possession at the moment. And uh, Lafata won't be able to pick out a teammate initially, but then it comes back. And Skalik on the right-hand side loses out to Strinic. Czech Republic regained possession. This is better from them. This is Krejci. Gets around the fullback into the penalty area. Good recovery defending, though. That's really, really good to clear it away. Czech Republic fans screaming for a penalty as it was inside the box, that challenge. But Mark Klattenberg waves play on. And down the other end, here comes Mandzukic. Really good ball into the penalty area. Perisic was arriving. And he slid for it, but he couldn't get a touch. And Czech would have been in trouble there. Shot eventually comes in from Rakitic. And that was always rising too high. But Croatia now beginning to rack up the chances. Yes, yeah, a great counter-attack from Croatia. There's a ball played into Mandzukic's feet. He, he, he brings it down the left-hand side of the 18-yard box. Plays a lovely little ball across the Perisic. He's absolutely broke his neck to try and get into the box. He must have run 50, 60 yards to get into the box there. The, pass, the final ball was just a little bit off. But that's a major let off for the Czech Republic. Yeah, I like the look of Perisic. He's very athletic, he's fast, and he's getting up to support Mandzukic whenever he can in this game. We have played almost half of the first half. Nil-nil between the Czech Republic and Croatia here on Five Live from the BBC. Don't forget Spain against Turkey uh, coming up later on. And if you want to watch all the goals from all of today's games, download the Euro 2016 catch-up on the iPlayer. It'll be available from 6am tomorrow morning.
Free kick to Croatia here on the halfway line, and Serna, who's just just he looks to be washing his hands down there. He took a took some water, and he's just splashed it all over his hands, and now he's okay to continue. So Modric stands over the free kick, which is just inside the Croatia half. Jury Taggart. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, the Czech Republic, they've seen bits and pieces of the ball, half-decent amount of possession, but, you know, that they keep giving away sloppy passes. The possession they're giving away is very, very sloppy, and, and you don't expect that from a Czech Republic side. Last you night know. I was at Stade de France in Paris, and the Poles, obviously, a very defensive formation against Germany, but whenever they broke forward... Um, it was one man on his own. It was put your head down and plough on. There wasn't that sort of composure to stop and, and look for a teammate. I think that's what we're seeing from yeah. Czech Republic here. When, when they clear it away, they're not retaining the ball very often. It's just happened once again. Uh, clearance from Kadetsebek just gives possession, just hands it back to Croatia. we we'll have it now with Choluka, and that's a good ball midway inside the Czech Republic half to pick out uh, Modric. He's made a burst here down the right-hand side, and... Uh, Followed all the way by Plashil, Yaroslav Plashil, the Bordeaux midfielder, plays his club football here in France. 102nd cap for him, very much one of the veterans of this Czech Republic team, but he, he kept up with Modric there. Here comes the corner, played in by Serna, headed away by Sivok. Good defender's header, good and solid, out of the penalty area, out for a throw-in, which Serna takes quickly. This multi-ball system is causing problems because a, a young ball boy will, will throw the ball to, to the throw-in taker but then the original ball gets thrown back as well and we're having this ridiculous situation of two balls on the pitch and, and they've just been over-eager they're, pro- they're only young kids they're probably doing their best but they just need to calm down a little bit yeah. here is Serna's latest throw just one ball on the pitch now Plashel heads it away just about gets it outside the penalty area this is Strinch on the left-hand side gives it on to Brozovic two defenders trying to get close to him one is Skalak of Brighton and then Strinch gives it back inside his own half to Vida once again. Jerry? Yeah, just going back there. Uh, <laughs> someone that needs to have a little word with those ball boys are. Just calm them down. It's very exciting for them, you know. Uh, and again, you'll see Croatia trying to build the play from, from inside their own half. They're nice and patient. They're trying to get Luka Modric on the ball. They're trying to get Rakitic in that space between the back four and the midfield. Get him turned and link up with Mandukic. Modric, lovely ball. Such craft in his play. Outside of the right boot to pick out Serna. Rakitic now makes a dart into the penalty area. Serna picks him up. Then it's pulled back for Perisic. And just as he pulled the trigger, once again it was Plasil who got in to smother that shot. But it's, it's all the threat of the moment coming from Croatia. Well, there you've just seen the, build, the link play between Modric and Radicic. You know, they opened them up there. And if this game keeps going on like this, the Czech Republic are doing... You know, the majority of the running here, and it's only a matter of time you fear that there's going to be an opening, a clear opening for the, for Croatia. Yeah, Czech Republic who played with their backs to the walls, if you like, against Spain. And uh, any suggestion they were going to try a more attacking style here, well, they're finding it incredibly difficult against Croatia, who are pinning them back repeatedly. Let's see what Krejci can do down the left-hand side here. Serna goes in, strong. Krejci hits the deck. Mark Klattenberg says fair tackle, and Krejci's got to pick himself up off the ground. Here is Modric for Croatia to Serna on the right-hand side. Back in to Modric. Krejci is OK. He's back, and now he's inside his own half. But it is very much 11 men behind the ball for the Czech Republic whenever Croatia get possession. That's the problem you have when you're a team like Croatia, and you're trying to build up slow play. If you give the Czech Republic enough time, they'll get back on shape, and then it'll be harder to break down. Really? So, no, no, sorry, Jerry. Just a really nice turn there by Rakitic. Laid the ball off to Perisic. This is Modric. Back out to Rakitic on the right-hand side. It's a crossing position, but he left a manoeuvre away from the fullback. Decides to roll it back 10 yards to Serna. This is Luka Modric. Back out to Rakitic. Now he's got in around the back, has he? Out comes the centre half. Hublik was alert, and that will be a corner. Corner to Croatia on the right-hand side. Yeah, well, that's good defender from the big centre half, Hublik. You know, he, he was a little bit caught out of position. He was doing his job, marking his man, but he had to come across and cover there because Rakitic got away from his fullback. So Ivan Rakitic of Barcelona to take the corner. That's a good delivery, but once again, Hubnik is in underneath it. Heads it out of the penalty area, collected by Strinch, who's up from left-back for Croatia. He gives it to Choluka, just about back to Strinch once again. That's good movement from Strinch. Gets away from Rosicki, and Rosicki battles back, and the Czech Republic fans love that. Little Thomas Rosicki throwing himself full-hearted into the tackle. It's another corner to Croatia. Well, Strinch, he's, he's done everything right. He's got away from Rosicki, but then he has a look up. Just put the ball in early. 
It's warming up this game. Corner from the far side. Diving header from Plasio doesn't fully get it away. It's gone out for another corner. So already in the game, this will be the sixth corner for Croatia. Man to take it, Brozovic. Sends it in high. Petr Cech comes out. That was an invitation for him to come and punch, and he does. What a good punch from Cech all the way to the halfway line. Yeah, the, the, the man the man mark in the Czech Republic's inside the box, and Croatia tried to use the block on him, and he got away from it, but Cech was alert to that and came out and punched it. Badalate, beautiful ball to Brozovic. Crossing position on the left-hand side. Turns one way, then the other. Left foot across. Too high for Mandukic. Backpedaling was Limbirski. He's not been able to head it out of the pedal area, so coming back in support is Darida, and he puts it out for the corner. It's become increasingly frantic at the back for the Czech Republic. They're just clearing their lines. Anywhere will do. This time, Serna will take the corner. They're really rotating the corner kick takers. Floated in, palmed away by Czech, drilled by Strinch, but too high. And that goes over the crossbar, and it'll be a goal kick. All this talk of, of Harry Kane taking corners. It seems with Croatia, and I'm sure there's more method to it than this, but it's whoever's closest. You know, well, We've had four different corner takers. Yeah, I think that, you know they tried to do a quick one there, but I think, like you say, you know, some of the... Croatian players are very very technical and I think when you look at the corners they're taking there's no rocket sense behind them they're basically putting the ball into good areas for the big centre halves the big defenders and Amanzukic to go and attack just keep it away from the keeper you boys go and attack it Croatia have had eight attempts at goal already we've not played half an hour yet Czech Republic have yet to have a single one three of those Croatian attempts have been on target here is Hubnik at the back Looks like Mandzukic has picked up an injury. He's holding his head, so Mark Klattenberg, I think he was going to blow his whistle. He saw the ball was going out of play anyway. And Mark Klattenberg now asking Mario Mandzukic if he requires some medical attention, and I think he does. So, Klattenberg, no, 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 he said he's OK. Mandzukic feeling the back of his head, but he doesn't want the physio to have to come on because he knows he'd have to leave the field there. Yeah, he's fine. He's talked a bit of a clatter in. But he's fine. Just getting to see the chance earlier on on our monitors here. Krejci, that one time when he got forward into the penalty area, Serna with a, a strong but, but fair challenge on him. Nil-nil between the Czech Republic and Croatia here in Saint Etienne, the 20th game of Euro 2016. Badley gives it back to Vida. It's been quite structured from Croatia so far. Just working their way through the rhythm, getting into their stride, creating chances, yet to really cause a huge panic for Petr Cech. That one time when he was backpedalling and Mandzukic had the header, it was still a very tight angle. Here is Thomas Rosicki, immediately tackled. Rakitic now. 2-1-2 two two if he's quick enough. Rakitic with Mandzukic in front of him. Rolls it for Mandzukic. Mandzukic is... Rakitic is furious. Mandzukic could have rolled it back to him. Might have been a cleaner shot. But that just shows what an out-and-out -out striker Mandzukic is. Once he's in the penalty area, he had no intention of passing to anyone. Here is Serna. Looks across from the right-hand side. Blocked down by Limbirski. And it's picked up by Luka Modric. And it's wave after wave of Croatia attack here in the first half in Saint Etienne. Still no goals. Modric, low to the feet of Rakitic. Back again to Modric. He's played it into the penalty area. It wasn't intended for Perisic. Perisic tried to follow it up. But Petr Cech had the head start on him. And the Czech Republic goalkeeper gets there first. Well, there you see Luka Modric at his brilliant pick. Best. plays and follows his pass gets a 1-2 off Mandzukic and then plays a little slidery ball with the outside of his right foot unfortunately there's no one reading that ball it's an absolutely fantastic ball but there's no one reading it passes like a snooker player doesn't he you, he's thinking two passes ahead three passes ahead all the time if I give it here and get it back where, where will the next outlet be uh, really good vision from the former Tottenham man now at Real Madrid Petacek clears the ball up over the halfway line, headed by Vida, and picked up by Thomas Rosicki on the right-hand side. Puts it in front of Skalak. Skalak won't get it. It's a poor ball from Rosicki, and it goes out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, again, we're just saying, you know, the Czech Republic are getting good bits of possession. They're getting space as well to go and attack Croatia. But when they get it, their passing is so poor at the minute. It's, they're giving away possession so cheaply. It must be so frustrating if you're, you know, Skala, and you're running down that wing. And one of your top players, Thomas Rosicki, can't even pass the ball 10, 15 yards into your path. Flick on by Strinch from the goalkeeper's clearance. And Croatia don't hold on to the ball. This is Hubnik back on the edge of his own penalty area for the Czech Republic. Playing from right to left as we look down. Limbirski, good ball. 
Well, let's see what they can do now. Getting into the Croatian final third. It's taken a lot of passes just to get to this position for the Czechs. Derrida back towards the halfway line with plenty of space over there for Sivok. Sivok rolls it in low towards the edge of the penalty area to the striker, Lafata. Back out to the right hand side. Kadetzebek could come forward. Can't deliver a decent cross in, but it comes back to him. He can't control it. And Croatia almost effortlessly regained the ball. Czech Republic need, need to provide something better here. They need to say it again, Connor. <laughs> They've just given away possession far too cheaply at the minute. And there, they actually had some good build-up play. Worked the ball out onto the right-hand side of the pitch in the final third. And it just slips over the top of his foot. And out for a throw into Croatia. Here come the Czech Republic. This is... Limbirski on the left-hand side, infield to Yaroslav Plashil. Back out to David Limbirski, again on the left-hand side. Back to Plashil, and it, it's the same thing happens here. An overstruck pass, Plashil doesn't control it, and the Czech Republic just simply hands the ball back to Croatia, who, who don't even need to make a tackle at the moment. Czech Republic keep just running it out of play. And, and they feel that isolate, isolated Luka Modric down the left-hand channel there, and he's not exactly the best offensive midfielder in the world. And again, the, the pass goes astray. The, re the, the Czech Republic manager must be pulling his hair out on the sides. We've played 33 minutes. Luka Modric has had 33 completed passes. Over 90% success rate for Modric in this game so far. He is the man who pulls the strings. They've got Rakitic, they've got Mandzukic. But Modric is the, is the creative hub in the middle of that midfield. Does sit quite deep in the midfield, but gets forward when the opportunity presents itself. Nil, nil here in Saint-Étienne on 5 Live and we'll be seeing Spain against Turkey later on this evening 8 o'clock full commentary right here on 5 Live here come the Czech Republic with Kadetzebek down the right hand side plays it on to Skalak tight angle but he manages to swivel and send in a decent cross Lafaro is not the, the tallest striker jumps with the goalkeeper and Šubišić does enough to win a free kick referees say that he was impeded yeah I think Klattenberg's done him a little bit of a favour just going to have another look at it on the replay yeah, probably is to be first. A little body check from the Fata. But again, that time, good build up play. Again, down the right hand side. Find space, got a cross in. That's a little bit better. But the opportunities that come along for the Czech Republic, they have to use, use them more. They have to do better when these opportunities arise. It's as simple as that because at the minute, Croatia are you know, controlling the possession controlling the play that's the voice of Jerry Taggart former Northern Ireland and Leicester City defender watching this game with us here on 5 Live Croatia who've enjoyed most of the possession of the chances so far but they haven't been able to break down the Czech Republic just yet you know that collision with the goalkeeper and he gets the free kick and you know it, it, it's the way of modern football now you, you, you just can't challenge goalkeepers in the air um, I was watching on French television the other night they were showing some highlights from previous European championships when Denmark won it in in 1992 and you remember that famous John Jensen goal that in the final the tackle that goes in to win the ball before the pass is played they nearly kill the defender there is no in, in, you know, in this day and age that would have been a six game ban that tackle and you just see even since 1992 how the game has changed in terms of what you can and can't do I think I think if you even had a word with Chris Waddle in the studio about that he would even say that you know and he was a wide player obviously Chris but he could handle himself on the pitch he was uh, prepared to take a challenge and, and hand one out you know and that's the way football was played back then obviously you want to stop the, the bad challenges because you know, there was a lot of bad challenges in them days but at the same time good tackles yeah. you can't beat it I'm sorry <laughs> that's the voice of former central defender Jerry Taggart who made a few good tackles in his day here is uh, Limberski gave it in a rather tight angle to Krejci but gets it back again in the Czech Republic again it's an awful lot of hard work and huff and puff that they've got to go through just to come over the halfway line and then inevitably they give it away and Rakitic into Mandzukic back out to Rakitic he's into the pedal area now right hand side that's a brilliant turn Rakitic shoots low saved by Petacek using his shins it ricochets up in the air and when it comes down Czech is able to gather it but Rakitic looking and oozing class as he attacks there yeah well to begin with again you see the build up play between the midfield and the front players as the ball goes into, in, in, into Rakitic from Bardelay he spins it round the corner first time the man Zuki who gives him it back he's on his bike Rakitic and he cuts inside gets a shot off but fair play to 
Petr Cech, he uses all his experience to just snuff that one out, but good link-up play again from Croatia. Yeah, the key in that movement was the turn to get into the penalty area. Really created space for him. And Czech Republic are in trouble here. This is Perisic bearing down on the penalty area. Just Sivak in front of him, shoots and scores! Ivan Perisic took that really well with Sivak backing off him. He's allowed into the penalty area and he shoots across Petr Cech to beat one of the best goalkeepers in the world and to put Croatia in front. 37 minutes played, Jerry Taggart. You've got to say they deserve it. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing less than what they deserve. And Perisic, who's been everywhere on the pitch today, he's been on the right-hand side, through the middle, there he pops up on the left-hand side, takes a great, gets the ball out of his foot, probably on his weaker left foot, but what an assured finish into the bottom left-hand corner of Peter Schmeichel's net. You know, that's top class, there's nothing Petr Cech could do about that. Well, it's a goal that might well enliven this game now, it will force the Czech Republic to come out and attack Croatia he took it really well he enters the penalty area left hand side puts it on his left boot takes a little half step just to steady himself just to get the pace right and shoots beyond Petr Cech. we're seeing several replays do you think I mean it's well struck but do you think Petr Cech will be disappointed when he sees it back when you look at the defender he's closed down the near post space so the only place the only, the only place that Perisic can shoot is into the far corner and so he has to be covering that and he's not so yeah I'm going to say that he is partly to blame for that I think it took a little ricochet as well that might have helped it on the way off the, off the central defender but what the central defender did did properly was cut down the space of the goal and make sure that he could only fire it into one corner Sure Lucas got a swim cap on again uh, that cut to his head obviously opening up again he had three stitches in it after the game against Turkey and Cholika in the amidst the hullabaloo of the celebrations of the goal left the field of play got his uh, strapped bandage wrapped right the way around ahead you can see no hair now and he's got quite a, a bushy mane to Zvedrin Cholika but all you can see now is white bandage here comes Thomas Rosetsky crowded out of it ham and the sandwich between Mandzukic and Rakitic free kick to the Czech Republic no that's not a free kick for me Thomas Rosicki too many touches early he's got closed down by three Croatians lucky to get away with that one for me well it's a group that's taking shape now for Croatia as things stand they uh, top the group with six points Spain who play later on three Turkey and the Czech Republic yet to get on the board here is Krejci on the left for the Czech Republic but the noise of the moment in saint Etienne is coming from Croatia's fans celebrating being 1-0 up the goal from Perisic, he's 14th in international football. This is Krejci on the left-hand side. He's 10 yards from the byline, but retreating. Gives it back to Kublik once again. Into Thomas Rosicki. So often the Czech Republic look for Rosicki to be the creative inspiration. And that's a floated ball into the penalty area. Kadetsebek bravely lunged for it, but he was going to do well to get it from there. And it, it falls very easily for Šubicic, and the goalkeeper can take his time. Yeah, there just wasn't enough pace on that ball for me, for him to attack. And I've got to be honest, in the last, well, for the most of the first half, I think Thomas rosiski has been a bit of a bystander in this game. There he's, he's fared one or two passes together and put a half-decent ball into the box. But other than that, you know, he, he's been... He's been closed down well. He's given possession away far too easily. Yeah, there is a suggestion he's in the team on his reputation only, not on current form, and certainly for his club where he only played 19 minutes in all competitions for Arsenal this past season. Uh, Rosicki here fouling Luka Modric. Modric who flicks the ball over Rosicki, wanted to run around the other side, and uh, a little bit of an old Tottenham-Arsenal-North London rivalry there as Rosicki drags down Modric in a free kick to Croatia well there you see the sharpness between the two players you know Rosicki again can't live with different, Modric different class, just yeah. a different level at the minute you know Thomas Rosicki a few years ago was at yeah. that level but these days he just can't reach it yeah really great player at his peak but you would say that whereas Modric at the moment at his peak uh, Rosicki for now looking a little bit past it free kick played into the penalty area and Vida who was able to creep in I was almost waiting for an offside flag there but Vida would have been onside that would have counted had he been able to direct it goal bound couldn't get a firm to I think Choluk if anything gets in his way there the two central defenders going for the same ball at the same time and it hits Vida rather than him hitting the ball well it's a fantastic ball in right in the lad area where it's very very difficult between the penalty box the penalty spot and the six yard box very very difficult for any defender 
to defend that properly. And the two Croatian centre halves get round the back of the two Czech Republic defenders. And really, that should be 2 0. That's a guilt edge opportunity. And 2 0, and you would begin to worry was this all, you know, was it over already? We've still got three minutes of normal time to go until half time. But the way Croatia have dominated this opening half, I think a second goal and Czech Republic will be done and dusted. Here they are on the right hand side, Kadetsebek tries to give it down the flank there's a, a foul on Darida oh, no it's not a foul it's a throw in taken quickly back to Thomas Sivak he was the defender who was backing away from Perisic for the goal but as Jerry said he, he was covering you know an angle where Perisic wasn't able to hit and in the end he puts it across the body of the goalkeeper Perisic and tucked it into the corner for 1-0 possession with the Czech Republic Vladimir Darida plays in Germany with Hertha Berlin Across to David Limbierski, down that left channel for Plaschel of Bordeaux. But again, there's no way he can give anything into the penalty area there. It's retreat, 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 and back to the halfway line and Hubnik once again. Here is Plaschel, they're trying to get it in around the penalty area, but funny, it's so difficult. David Lafata and his heels clipped from behind there. That wasn't a good tackle, actually. It's a free kick to the Czech Republic. Now, this could be something. Rosicki will have a look at this, I'm sure. It's about four or five paces outside the penalty area, but a little bit more than that. But this, given that they've had no chances in the game, surely they've got to have a pop from here. Yeah, you're spot on. You know, somebody's got to come up and try and pull a little bit of magic. You know, Krejci played that ball. It was a very, very difficult ball to try and get in. Third play to Lafada. He's made the most of a bad ball for me and managed to get a free kick out of it. So well played, Lafada. So free kick to Czech Republic, who trail 1 0 here in Saint Etienne on 5 Live from the BBC we've only got 90 seconds of normal time remaining in the first half now it looks like Lafata who won the free kick wants to take it himself short run up drills it straight into the wall comes back to Lafata drills it in again the wall still does its job now it ricochets back to Thomas Rosicki and uh, Czech Republic want to be careful here they've committed a lot of players forward Modric gives it to Brozovic the blue jersey streaming into attack now for Croatia Serna back in field to Brozovic once again Czech Republic have got plenty back now Hubnik makes a challenge and the game beginning to stretch in the closing stages of the first half helped on in midfield to Thomas Rosicki running up against Modric can't pick out a teammate again he's been poor Rosicki he's not been able to provide the creative spark that the Czech Republic need and Croatia regained possession here and we are now into the last 40 seconds ahead of what we'll find out will be stoppage time before the break Jerry Tiger again I'll go back to what I said earlier when you, these opportunities these arise and you're under the cost for most of the half you know you have to make the most of them and that free kick was terrible you know not only was it a bad free kick but it didn't clear the wall and you'd rather it clear the wall and go into the stand than hit the wall and then the Croatians hit you on the counter attack you know give your team a chance when you get an opportunity and they're just not they're not they're not taking the opportunities and making the most of them yeah not a great pass there from Vida to Strinch and maybe Czech Republic might get a, a late opportunity of their own here. Just one minute being added on for stoppage time. But here comes Kadetza back. Gives it to Rosicki. Everything slows down with Rosicki. Back out to the right-hand side. Chance to maybe deliver across. Ricochets off the first defender and goes out for a throw-in to the Czech Republic who are running out of time here in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Croatia leading 1-0. Well-taken goal by Ivan Perisic and his 49th cap. And Czech Republic, I mean, they know there's only seconds left. Surely you've got to pump it into the box, but they give it away in midfield once again. It's been a disappointing performance of the Czechs in this first half as a free kick is awarded to Croatia. Foul on Mandzukic, and that presumably will be that for the first half, certainly from a Czech Republic point of view. Modric places the ball for the free kick. And what does the Czech Republic coach Pavel Verba do now over half time to try and turn this around? I'll give you one guess, Connor, what he does. <laughs> and it's not make tea and sandwiches <laughs> or give them tea and sandwiches. It's throw tea and sandwiches. <laughs> and I wonder, will he do a Roy Hodgson and, uh, and bring on a couple of attackers? Croatia with a corner. Will there be time to take it? There won't. Mark Clattenburg brings the whistle to his lips. Croatia first. Now, I, I, I can see exactly why Croatia are upset there. If you've got time to win a corner... How seldom do you see that happen? You know, that the referee will say, we don't actually have time to take it. No, that's wrong. If the ball goes out of play and you're allowed to... The, the, the free kick on the corner is allowed to be taken 
on the first phase the players are like if it goes to the second phase then the referee has yeah. to blow up uh, the only thing I can assume is Clattenburg will say I've blown the whistle before it's gone out of play that's the only thing that could get him uh, the, the sort of technicality on that but anyway it's 1-0 to Croatia it's Perisic's goal uh, Croatia who many people are tipping to be dark horses here well they're brightening up Czech Republic nil, Croatia 1 thanks very much Carlo well yeah Croatia have just bossed this game so far they've dominated the possession they have scored the goal I guess the big question Jerry Taggart is is can Czech Republic somehow get back into it or maybe, just maybe, are Croatia going to put them to the sword here? Because they've been that dominant. Well, I'm a little bit surprised that there's no changes been made at half-time by the Czech Republic. So, obviously, he's had a few words at half-time. He's probably going to give one or two of them another 10 to 15 minutes. And if it doesn't work, if it still stays the same, then, you know, you could well see changes and, you know, totally justified, in my opinion. Well, here is Hubnik jumping at the back he's been a busy man the main central defender for the Czech Republic but once again Rakitic comes forward drills a shot from just the edge of the D it's too high but but it's too easy you know he just carves his way in takes a shot it, they hardly have to, to put in much effort here Croatia they're just creating chance after chance after chance well though you see Rakitic going right through the middle of the pitch and the big centre half Siv Sivak just backs off backs off and he leaves it up to Limburski the, 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 the left back for the Czech Republic to come out and embrace, you know, engage him you know, the two centre halves for the Czech Republic don't look comfortable at all. When the Czechs arrived here uh, at the stadium, they came out on the pitch, they were wearing dark jackets and these sort of pale trousers. Um, Steve Wilson, our colleague from TV, said they looked more like a Ryder Cup team than a, than a, than a football team at a major tournament. Um, I don't know if it's that sort of curse of the, the Liverpool white suits <laughs> of the FA Cup final, but something just isn't clicking for Czech Republic they are only 1-0 down of course throw into Croatia on the far side really good distance on that from Serna looking for Mandzukic and uh, the ball is cleared back out towards Serna again on the right hand side we mentioned his father passed away uh, during the week uh, he was crying during the national anthem you can see the tears rolling down his face um, he has said apparently that, uh, that one of the last things his father said to him when he was alive was that he wanted him to keep playing in the match if, uh, if anything was to happen so you can just imagine how emotional that has been for him uh, remaining on here in the tournament at uh, what is a very emotional time yeah you're spot on <clears throat> you know it must be bad enough as it is for you know him and his family to deal with what's happened but to try and then pick yourself up so them words from his, from his father on his, on his, on his death, deathbed as, as it was well, well obviously I helped him to make his mind up on that you know yeah institution of the Croatia team as well Dario Serna his 131st international appearance uh, this afternoon there's, uh, there's just a little clash down the other end Srinic has fallen off the field to play but has clearly got a problem here he's hurt himself in a, in a collision with the Czech Republic right back Kadetsebek who is charging forward both players going for the ball in whatever way the fullback has fallen there he's hurt himself now of course because he's off the field of play Mark Klanberg has to wave play on here so that he'll, he'll get some treatment off the field of play uh, and Croatia as you can imagine are trying to waste a bit of time here and, and there's all sorts of activity taking place down in the technical areas below us but we'll, we'll just monitor the situation for a moment this is five live from the BBC we are live in St Etienne three minutes played in the second half Perisic's goal separates the teams it came eight minutes before the break a well struck shot to beat Petr Cech and uh, the throw in here by Kadetsebek for the Czech Republic Check the goalkeeper Kadetsebek, Hubnik, Sivok and Limbirski are the back four Plaschel sort of sits as the anchor in midfield then they've got Skalak on the right hand side Rosicki and Krejci in the middle Derida on the left here they come now with Kaderbeck on the right hand side gives it into Skalak of Brighton and Hove Albion he manages to swing in across but acrobatically headed away by Damago Vida and that goes out for a throw in to the Czech Republic just to complete their lineup. David Lafata is their striker up front the Sparta Prague attacker all time top scorer in the Czech Republic top flight he won the golden boot this season fifth time in six years he'd won the golden boot but he's not had anything like a golden chance in this game no but to be fair he's looked quite lively you know he's the one player that you know wants to try and do well here come Croatia again Rakitic looking around always aware where's the support that's a brilliant pass to Perisic it is so disguised that Perisic had given up on it Rakitic turned in field it's a complete 
you know, turn the head the other way, send the disguise pass. It was a brilliant pass. You see, normally he plays with Messi and Suarez, and, and they would have followed that up. And Perisic must be so disappointed he didn't, uh, he didn't do so. Um, there's been an elaborate change of headwear, by the way, in Charluca. I'll tell you about that in a moment. He was wearing his swim cap in the first half. He's now wearing a sort of Petr Cech type number. And uh, patriotically, he's decked out in the, the national colours. He's got a red, white and blue scrum cap on now. Does veteran Charluca obviously wanting to protect that injury and not have it open up again with the, the games to come for Croatia. The way they've been playing here, they might get quite a few more games at this tournament. Here is Perisic, infield to Badley, plays it into the centre circle, Mandzukic gets it taken off his toe. This is Plaschel for the Czech Republic, tries to send it to the right-hand side, but just as uh, Kerecebek tried to get onto it, an immediate tackle by Strinch, and Croatia just continue to be the stronger team in this particular battle. They are winning the arm wrestle of the moment. They've got more guile, the tactics look sharper, and certainly they're more up for the fight. Here is Rakitic again. He's only got Mandzukic in front of him. Gives it back softly to Modric. Back again now to Brozovic. Gets within 10 yards of the penalty area. He's taken down. The loose ball falls to Cerner. Cerner tries to cross to the right-hand side. Blocked by the first defender. Hubnik gets ahead on it. And it should be cleared away here. And it will be by Krejci. Well, it should have been. And said that as he was swinging his boot. Eventually, they work their way out of trouble, the Czech Republic. But work is the word. Endeavour is needed just to get out of their own final third. Yeah, again, it's great build-up play from from Croatia and it's end the end stuff now and he, both teams are getting a chance here comes Thomas Rosicki towards the edge of the penalty area plays a 1-2 Czech Republic looking for more from him now in the second half it comes back to Rosicki scoops it into the air to the left hand side who's up there Limbiski has come forward it's high and it's hanging Lafada can't get up off the ground then yeah, Kadetsovets tries the shot which is ricocheted out and blocked for a throw in but it is better for Czech Republic it wasn't hard to be better for the first half but they have improved yeah you know he's definitely had a few words the manager at half time they've come out the second half bit more energy than they finished the first half which you say you know couldn't have got any worse for them but it's end the end stuff now both teams are having a go Czech Republic have been at every Euros final since their independence in 1993 they normally do well at European Championships in a year that ends in a six. They won it in 1976, and of course they got to the final in 1996. But here in 2016, a shot comes in from Krejci that's easily saved by Subashi. That's their first shot on target. Yeah, that's a good build-up play. It's a lovely little ball in, into, the, into the, the box from Passel. A bit speculative overhead kick, but at the end of the day, he's got a shot off. It's on target, and the keepers had to make a save, so... Encouraging signs early on in the second half. Ladislav Krejci, Sparta Prague midfielder, looking for his fifth international goal. He celebrates every goal by uh, kissing a, a clover tattoo on his hand. He's also got a tattoo of St. Winslow's on his right arm. He's a, a patron saint, I believe, of the Czech Republic. Certainly a, a prominent figure for Czech Republic patriotism. Here is... Luka Modric in possession on the far side such a easy on the eye footballer look at that, just glides away as others fall into each other Modric finding space, now can he pick out a pass to Perisic on the left hand side across comes Kadetsebek and he slides it out for a throw in but it's men against boys from Croatia on the attack yeah, the, the, you see again the magic of Luka Modric, it's a little give and go in the middle of the pitch, he just slides it in them, gets it back, one touch and plays it, squeeze the ball out to the left hand side for Petrovic but Unfortunately, just was an inch perfect. Throw by Strinch and uh, cleared away by the Czech Republic. Now, what can they do here? Croatia have committed players forward. Czech Republic cannot get out of their own half. Strinic wins possession back, tries to give it into Rakitic. Modric is quicker to the loose ball than Rosicki. And then it's helped on by Brozovic but into the penalty area, which Petacek has come to the edge of. And he picks up the ball and bowls it out underarm to the left-hand side. Thomas Rosicki tackled immediately by Cerna. He's not had the time and space that he requires to have any sort of impact on this game, Rosicki. His passing has been off uh, by his standards as well. As Rakitic gives the ball to Dario Cerna on the right-hand side, back into Rakitic. Czech Republic are backing off him. I think their heads are dropping a little bit here. Rakitic into the penalty area, and then as he tries to release the pass out to Brozovic, it breaks down. Now can the Czech Republic break, maybe? Rosicki passes over the halfway line to Darida, has to turn. Gives it back to the fullback, Kadetsebek. Now it's forward to Skalak, the Brighton man. He'll give it 
to Dorita again. That's a better ball. Skalix in the penalty area. Can he get there before the ball? And he does. He crosses. It's headed away by Vida. But it will be a throw into the Czech Republic. And at least there's a tiny, tiny glimmer there for them. Yeah, well played, Czech Republic. You know, you've got Mansukic back in his own defensive third, trying to stop them building up. He can't stop it. It's a decent ball into the box. You probably want it floated to the back stick, to be honest. He's, he hasn't beat the first man yet again. And a side for a throw, but better play from the Czech Republic. Almost 10 minutes played in the second half. You just wonder, will Croatia, Rue, not adding to their goal tally with the dominance that they've had? Oh dear, oh dear. Kadetzebek takes the throw, and Plaschel, one of the most experienced players on the pitch, fails to control a rudimentary pass, and it goes straight out of play for a throw into Croatia. I mean, they work so hard to get into that position. How demoralising if you're a supporter or a player in this Czech Yeah, it's center. criminal, it's criminal. I, I'll go back to opportunities, taking your opportunities. A throw-in is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to try and get a, a cross in the box, build something down here and put Croatia under, under pressure. And when yep. you're putting the ball straight out for play, then, you know... You're only out doing yourself. Look how flat the Czech Republic supporters now are, sitting on their seats, one or two of them trying to get a chant going. Back around kickoff, they were twirling scarves and they were creating most of the noise here in Santetti. And there might be more supporters of Croatia in this stadium, but the Czech Republic fans were making all the noise early on in the game, but it was still nil-nil. They are now feeling flat, summing up the mood of their team's performance. Throw it on the far side. Lembirski has to come forward to take it gives it to Thomas Rosicki what can he create here nothing at the moment scoops it towards the edge of the penalty area where Choluka with a stooping header gets it away and now Mandzukic can break into the Czech Republic half he's got support behind by Perisic he's running along the byline gets level with the angle of the penalty area turns gives it back to Ivan Perisic who in turn plays it 15 yards behind him to Splinic and back in field once again to Vida Croatia very comfortable here probably worthy more than their one goal lead here on the ball is Badley to the left hand side to Strinic onto Ivan Perisic crossing position he's all right foot is Perisic on the left wing creeps his way into the penalty area now an acceleration of pace across comes Plashil and then he's fouled by Perisic and that will be a free kick out for the Czech Republic Jerry Taggart yeah listen that was good build up play you know there's a lot of passes involved and Perisic get into that but if you go back to the beginning when Mandzukic breaks away Perisic is on the overlap they've got a 2 feet one situation there that's a better opportunity than just stroking the ball it just seems to me like Croatia are happy they're happy to keep the ball and try and just pick the pick the, the Czech Republic off when they can but for me there Perisic should have went on the overlap Mandzukic should have played him in and it would have created a good opportunity now, producer Phil Wye, who's always sharp on these things, informs me that uh, Wenceslas, uh, the first, was the Duke of Bohemia from 921 to 935 AD. I mean, you knew this, Jerry, but he is regarded as the patron saint of, of the Czech state. So, uh, so we've got that one right. Well, here is Dario Serna in possession, and he gives it up to Rakitic, who's fouled on the edge of the centre circle, and that is a free kick to Croatia some frustration spilling over there from Yaroslav Plaschel free kick to Croatia Czech Republic just hauling themselves back into a defensive formation one or two little glimmers early in this second half but they're going to have to improve to get back in this one yeah they need to, they need to get a couple of more shots on target at least uh, but you know Croatia look very very comfortable as it is you know, I think it's going to be a mistake that probably lets the Czech Republic in at the minute. Spain against Turkey is the 8pm kickoff. Full commentary on Five Live with Alistair Bruce Ball and Danny Mills. If you go to the uh, Five Live Twitter account, the Five Live Sport Twitter account, you'll see a photo of Danny Mills mangling a ruler which belongs to Alistair Bruce Ball. More on that in a moment. Here is Rakitic. Is he onside? Runs forward, stamps it over the goalkeeper and scores! Ivan Rakitic puts it over and beyond Pedacek. It's the second goal that most probably will seal this now. I don't see any way back for the Czech Republic. Such has been the dominance of Croatia and Ivan Rakitic, who along with Luka Modric, has been head and shoulders above everyone else 
on this field. Oh, he made that look easy. What a calm finish over Pedacek. Czech Republic nil, Croatia 2. There's no doubt in the quality there of Rakitic, but go back there. What's the centre-half doing? Seriously, they're trying to force it out from the back. Absolutely terrible apart from Hugna in the midfield. He then tries to play offside. He doesn't even try and defend. It's shocking. Absolutely shocking from the Czech Republic. They're just, they're just basically throwing that game away. After starting a lot better, going back to Rakitic, what an absolute gorgeous finish by him. Just to lift it over Pericek. Simple as you like. Still very, very hard to do, but I'm sorry. Hudnik. Czech well. Republic are a shambles. They've had one or two attacks of the game. Otherwise, they have been completely pinned back. They found it difficult against Spain in the opener. And Croatia now threatening to run riot against them. 59 minutes on the clock. 2-0 to Croatia. Rakitic finished that ever so well. I mean, he looked every inch a Barcelona player doing that, isn't it? That's the sort of goal they score in the league all the time. That was so smooth. I'm thinking, go round, go round. You've got the momentum to go round, check, but no. Just flicks it over the top of him, cool as you like. And that just shows what a class player he is. That is his 12th international goal. They're letting off the fireworks away to our left-hand side where the main body of Croatia supporters are housed and they are celebrating that Rakitic goal in his 77th cap adding to the goal Perisic scored in the first half Czech Republic well we did say it didn't we second goal you really fear for the Czechs and, and who knows how this could end up now Connor, they came out the second half and, and they were better you know they they had more possession and when they got possession they used it better than what they did in the first half but you can't do that at the back you know when it's not on the play out you can't start forcing it because things like that happen not only that it just doesn't he doesn't want to defend his mistake now watch this 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 just sums up if you're just tuning in here on 5 Live an hour played Czech Republic nil Croatia 2 this sums up how comfortable Croatia's lead is they're going to take off Luka Modric Modric will go off Matteo Kovacic will come on in his place so Modric who's been running the show in the midfield he departs on comes Kovacic I'm, I'm, I'm sure Modric isn't injured this is a precaution to keep him fresh for the remainder of the tournament I think I've I seen him holding his groin on the way off I might be wrong maybe his underpants were just a little stuck <laughs> I don't know but he definitely well all smiles as he gets the high fives from the teammates and takes his seat on the bench Modric really really good I mean there's a reason Czech Republic have been under so much pressure and Modric is a huge part of that reason yeah he's a top class player and, and today you've seen why he's, he... here's another one Rakitic good ball from Andrukic into the penalty area this could be three saved by Pedicek he tried to pull it back for Brozovic who was in a central location it was unselfish from Mandzukic but Pedicek made the save Jerry Taggart it's a great ball from Rakitic again to Mandzukic final ball let him down there's not enough pace on that final ball the big check pretty comfortable in the end you have to fizz them balls across the face of goal goal sorry and there it's far too close to the keeper but again great build up he'll be disappointed by that Manzuka that's a great opportunity he needs to fizz that ball across the six yard box there so much time and space afforded to Croatia on the attack 2-0 they lead here in saint Etienne. Euro 2016 on 5 Live for the BBC Choluka just crouches down on the edge of the penalty area and cushions a header back to the goalkeeper so at the moment Croatia will be top of Group D with Spain to play Turkey later on Croatia on 6 points Spain on 3 with just one game played Turkey and the Czech Republic on no points and the Czech Republic now on a goal difference of minus 3 they stay in France Looks like it's going to be very short-lived. Croatia win a corner down the left-hand side. They've been very disappointed, Connor. I've got to say that's, you know, I've played against the Czech Republic in the past myself, and I tell you what, what's their team? They were, you know, back in the early nineties. Yeah, guys this, like Pavel Nedved. Oh, that was a proper team. Yeah. But this, this is not a proper Czech Republic team. That's not what I'm used to seeing the Czech Republic's play like. All the noise from the Croatia fans. They're enjoying themselves as Rakitic prepares to take the corner from the left out comes Pedic I thought he might have caught that actually I think it just sums up the general 
nerves amongst the Czech Republic defence that Czech punches, good punch mind you got good distance on it, Choluka sends it back into the mix and that's gone out for a throw in throw in to the Czech Republic who find themselves two goals down here and thoroughly outplayed in this game so far I mean there's, there's plenty of time left there's you know, 26 minutes plus the stoppages to go but there's been no evidence so far that the Czech Republic can get back into this one Vida sends it over the halfway line intercepted by Hubnik attempted back heel from Limbirsk oh dear you know when things aren't going well Czech Republic being completely dominated and then you try back heeled volleys that don't come off yeah. I'm just wondering what the fans will be thinking well I've just lost away a little bit now I have now the, there's no leaders in the team now to try and get this you know Rosicki who's the captain you know, where is he yeah. there he's standing in the middle of the pitch but he's not affecting the game in any way he's not created anything has he um, Rosicki standing in around the centre circle Mark Clattenburg blows the whistle for a foul and Serna I, on the far side I have to say Connor, that the two class players on the pitch are Modric and uh, Rakitic but the two wide players and Perisic and Brovovic yeah. the work rate they get through is outstanding like, there really really is you yeah. know they, they need a special mention for the work rate they're closing down and they're tracking back it's just phenomenal both Inter Milan players Brozovic who's on a long term loan at Inter from Dinamo Zagreb he's been a year and a half now closing in on two years here is Kovacic who came on in place of Luka Modric and now Vedran Choluka playing with this uh, protective headgear for that wound in his skull and, and what that does Connor, is when you've got two wide players like that uh, that will track back it just gives the two fullbacks that extra confidence to go all the way into the defensive half yeah here they come again Croatia this is Brozovic plays it to the edge of the penalty area Mandzukic just over the top so close to being a third Kadetsebek slid in tried to clear it away he nearly provided an assist for Mandzukic who had to react instantly and he's put it over the top I don't think he did he had more time than you thought there he could have controlled that and slid that home for he me that's a player yeah, you're right he a bit, a bit of, at it yeah for me, that's a player a bit out of form, would you not say? I don't know what his form's like, but to me, a top striker controls that mm -hmm. and says, thank you very much, 3-0. Well, he's almost sort of side-footed. I just wonder, was he trying to do a flamboyant finish there? As in, look at this, bang. Mario Mandzucic, who did win Serie A with the Juventus this season, sixth league title of his career. And a, a change for the Czech Republic, and it's a despondent Jerzy Skalek who goes off, the Brighton winger. And the man coming on to replace him is Josef Sural a tricky game to come into this one as a substitute and try to turn things around Czech Republic who found it very hard to get out of second gear sometimes they've been struck in reverse oh they're in trouble again here what's going on Perisic crosses it to Mandzukic that looked like a foul is it a push by Hubnik Mandzukic hit the deck referee says play on Mark Lattenberg trying to follow up with play there but Czech Republic there didn't seem to be any danger there they continually shoot themselves in the foot again I thought that was a penalty you know Mandzukic has got the wrong side of him he's not obliged to go in into the back of Mandzukic he has done Mandzukic has gone down there's clearly contact between the two we're very lucky to get away with that. Yeah, I think Mark Lattenberg <laughs> might have taken a bit of mercy but on the Czech Republic here. Going back to Joseph Sural, you know, that's one of the, you know, when you're a sub on the bench and your team's getting battered, that's one of the ones when the, <laughs> when the manager looks round. And you put your head down. Your head's down <laughs> looking at your, looking at your boots thinking, please not me, boss, please not me. I'm lucky you're on. Well, here he is, Joseph Sural, on at the European Championship. Of course he wants to play on this stage, but it's so so difficult uh, as the Czech Republic tried to get a rhythm going here and they are being dominated completely by Croatia let's see what Kadetsebek can do here down the right hand side out came Vida oh that's a nasty clash between the two of them I mean I don't think there was any intent there but Kadetsebek lunged himself trying to kick the ball Vida was very quick got in there first and Kadetsebek I guess it's a little bit reckless as he follows through into Vida and Vida, Vida certainly felt that Vida gets there first and then they collide smash into each other he's got it in the midriff there he's got it in the midriff there Vida <laughs> sorry about that uh, I think he'll be okay though he's a big strong boy there he is yeah he's got he's got the most Eastern European hairstyle you could ever wish to see it's shaven tightly on the sides and then long at the top with scooped back into a ponytail and uh, Damago Vida on his 40th international appearance will uh 
just get a bit of the, the rubbing salts and he'll be okay and he'll be back on very shortly, I'm sure. You know, go back to, you know, uh, Vida and Chorluka, the two proper centre halves, the one to defend, you know, when you look at the Czech Republic too, you know, they can barely head the ball properly. And you know, and when you when you're talking about teams and and, and and individual players and where they play, you know, the two centre halves for Croatia are head and shoulders at the two centre halves at the Czech Republic. So what chance have you got to build? Yeah. Both players who were injured there, uh Kadetzebek and Vida. Uh, both coming back onto the field of play at the same time in a handshake as well, which is nice to see. Mandzukic is down injured once again. Midway inside the Czech Republic half, and I'm sure his teammates are going to put it out here. Uh, Mark Klattenberg waits, Bolkos out of play, and now he'll go across to check on Mario Mandzukic. So a chance to remind you what's coming up later on on Five Live. Spain against Turkey at uh, at 8 o'clock. As I was mentioning just before the Rakitic goal, that there's a, a photo on the Five Live Sport uh, Twitter account which shows Danny Mills and it... It, this sums up both men I feel Alistair Bruce Ball lovely gentleman very neat and tidy brings a ruler with him to France so when he's drawing lines in his notes straight notes and Danny Mills who, who just goes around damaging other people's property and he picks up the ruler and he ties a knot in it it's a kind of plastic ruler uh, and you can see that photo along with other behind the scenes images on the Five Live social media uh, pages don't forget if you want to watch all the goals from all of today's games Euro 2016 catch up on the iPlayer from 6am tomorrow morning uh, after this match, Dan Walker is going to be joined by Guillaume Balague and Danny Murphy looking ahead to that next commentary, Spain against Turkey. And a huge day of sport tomorrow on Five Live. Underway at 10.30 with the rugby. Second rugby union test between Australia and England. And then three more commentaries from the Euros. There's also Formula One qualifying tomorrow from Azerbaijan. There's the final day of Royal Ascot. There's tennis in Queens. Uh, there is the US Open golf as well if the weather holds up for them. So, huge, huge day of sport, and we've got it all covered here on Five Live. Milan Skuda has come on as a replacement for the Czech Republic. He'll have been another one who'll be gazing at his shoelaces. Yellow card is shown to Thomas Sivok for another foul on Mandzukic, who's been in the wars in this game. Mandzukic might need more treatment here. We just had that break in play from Mandzukic to the physio on. Former Bayern Munich man, now at Juventus. Yellow card has been shown to Sivok so Croatia on the way as they were at the start of the day to remaining at the top of this group Group D unless the Spanish can score quite a few goals later on and who knows Croatia might add to their tally here they've still got 20 minutes or so free kick to Croatia five yards outside the penalty area Rakitic standing there so to the left footed option of Strinic I think Rakitic might fancy this for the angle. Paracek's careful. Rakitic does hit it and just too high. It was curling, it was dipping, but not doing either quickly enough. Yeah, and had everything on that. But yeah, like you say, just a little bit off target. Too much whip on it, really. But it's just all too easy for the Croatians here. Yeah, it's, it's almost know. difficult to gauge. Is it that Croatia have been really, really good? Or, or have Czech Republic just been really, really poor? I think it's a bit of bit both. Of both I yeah. think their, their passing's been terrible. Czech Republic, you know, defensively, they look very, very weak, I've got to say. The two centre-halves look very, very weak. Uh, compared, compared to the Croatian centre-halves, they, they, they haven't got the industry, on the, the industry on the wings like the Croatians have with Persic and... Uh, Bozovic. Bozovic. Yeah. Borovic even <laughs> so yeah you know it's it's been too easy in the end but at least if, if, if you're going to go out if you're going to lose a game of football have a go yep. get two on front you know have a go change it all he's doing is changing uh, personnel I, I think you're right I think it's just been a meek performance yeah. in the Czech Republic um, they're going to be leaving the Euros early it would seem and they're going with a whimper 2-0 Croatia lead and it's such a comfort 2-0 still 17 minutes of normal time to go free kick to the Czech Republic 10 yards inside their own half and a yellow card yellow card shown to Marcelo Brozovic not quite sure I presume that was just a dangling leg there Mark Klattenberg decided that was a professional foul free kick taken into Thomas Sivok if the Czechs could just go down and, and get one goal maybe would lead to a, an interesting finish here but at the moment it's all too easy for Croatia Kubnik 
gives it to Rizic. Rizic dropping as deep as the centre half. It's the only time he can get the ball in any sort of space. And even then, Rakitic is coming right up beside him as he's chaperon. This is Hubnik once again. And across come the Croatian midfield, just covering all the options. Czech Republic passing it around the halfway line here and making absolutely no dent into the Croatia rear guard. Sivak still midway inside his own half. Well, they're 2-0 down. They're on the way out of the Euros and they're wasting time inside their own half. This has been a really, really bad performance of the Czech Republic so far. Let's see what they could do here down the right-hand side with Sural, one of the men who came on as a substitute, looking to impress. Easily dispossessed by Ivan Strinic. Now Kovacic up towards Rakitic. Czech Republic regained possession. Darida over to the left-hand side. But it's so slow, Jerry. It's laboured. Well, it's actually painful to watch this Czech Republic performance. Here is Kidetsebek, crosses from the right-hand side, headed away by Vida. Now Rosicki, five yards outside the pedal here. That's a better ball. In with the outside of his right boot and headed in. Well, that's what they needed. Just a little bit of inspiration. And Milan Skoda, the youngster who's come on as a substitute, rises highest and plants a header into the top corner from absolutely nowhere. The Czech Republic have got one back. It's the youngster Skoda and the one decent piece of quality that Thomas Rosicki has provided in the game. He set up a goal. Well, that's what, that's what happens with class players, Rosicki. Done nothing all game. Picks out a pinpoint cross. And we further the substitute Skoda. He's come on and he's changed the game for his team. But I, I have to be honest, i never seen that coming. I don't think anybody in this stadium seen that coming, but they're back in the game, just as you called it, Connor. Fourth international goal for young Milan Skoda, just his tenth international appearance. He took that really well. Uh, outstretched dive for the goalkeeper, not getting anywhere near it. And now, just maybe, will Croatia wonder, hang on, we've been dominating this. How is it suddenly 2-1? Just a push there on Skoda as he goes off the field of play. And the, the boos and the jeers from the Czech Republic fans, but it will only be a throw-in and a throw-in to Croatia. We're just going to see replays of the monitor that fit right into the top corner. Very good header. That's a fantastic header. But again, I'm just going back to the way Croatia set up defensively. You know, they have a great shape without the ball. And they don't give the Czech Republic too many options, so they had to work hard to be able to create that option but that's what hasn't happened the whole game but it just shows you one opportunity from a classy player can cause you problems 13 minutes plus the added on to go here in Santa Etienne Croatia 2-1 in front now dominating the game but suddenly a goal from the blue set up by Thomas Rosicki headed in by Milan Skoda one of his first touches of the ball since coming on as a saw. Uh, Croatia now time wasting over a free kick and the, the Czechs are going nuts about that Mark Klattenberg gives a little pointed finger towards Shabushic the goalkeeper and says right get on with it no more time wasting well, it certainly livened up the atmosphere if nothing else that goal and there's a good 13 minutes well 13 minutes plus stopping time so there's plenty of time Hubnik heads it out from inside the Czech Republic penalty area picked up by Strunic on the left-hand side. Here is Kovacic. Turns under pressure. Back to Strunic once again. Infield to Badley. And this is Choluka back on the halfway line. Just been a little reminder to Croatia that they don't completely have it all their own way, but they're just going to want to try and rediscover the tempo now. With Brozovic on the right-hand side and a chance to cross from Serna. Good ball and headed back across goal by Perisic. It's kept in play and that's not a good clearance. And sliding in there was Plashelli did just enough to get it out of the penalty area. And it goes out by the corner flag for a throw-in to Croatia. There's at least two chances in there, Jerry Tiger. Well, uh, that's Perisic's he great header back across goal. And Manzuki just stood there. He's got to make a run towards the far post. He's done nothing. He's just stood in the middle of the box. Hoping it's going to come to him. It doesn't happen like that. He's got to make that run. As soon as the ball goes over his head, he's got to try and make a run in towards goal, but he doesn't. Great header back from Perisic. Croatia's throw in, taken by Stunic. Comes straight back out towards him and cleared away. Long by Sura. Now let's see what Skoda could do here. He's really livened things up. He's an athletic striker. 
and for the first time in the game the Croatian central defenders have been asked questions ball played wide out on the left hand side here is Limbirski can he get it into the penalty area he does but it's a deflected cross cleared away by Cholugan and isn't it amazing how goals change games Croatia's defence now looks a bit wobbly Choluka's clearance came off the back of Badley and goes out for a throw so the Czech Republic can remain on the attack the, the game has been transformed completely well, the sub is... here's a cross from the left hand side Limbirski Croatia just need to get rid of this Strinic with a header out of the penalty area this is Perisic back to Strinic once again and they are trying to regain their composure the Croatians and there Kovacic into space and Perisic yeah I think they're back here he goes over the halfway line 20 30 yards into Czech Republic territory it's a really strong run this from Ivan Perisic gets to the byline pulls it back now for Ivan Rakitic steps into the penalty area low ball to Brozovic that's a good turn just wide oh very nearly a third again a lovely build up play from Rakitic plays a sensible ball space side in the inside the box he's able to turn get a shot away but great defending from the Czech Republic Dario Serna as he goes across to take the corner the Croatia captain waving both arms in the air and drumming up the noise from the Croatia fans here comes his corner played in towards Perisic he can't get a clean touch on it Skoda's back helping out the defence tries to head it away it's back into the Czech Republic penalty area and Kadet Sebek is there to just nod it back to the goalkeeper Penacek but there is renewed belief from the Czech Republic supporters 10 minutes to go here in Saint Etienne a game that appeared to have petered out with Croatia leading 2-0 suddenly looks a bit more interesting now Strinic clears away from defence here is Mandzukic gives it back to Brozovic midway inside the Croatia half and then Cernic with nice composure to just weave around Sural and then turn and give it all the way back to his goalkeeper he clears straight down the centre of the field Kubnik, little collision on his ankle but Mandzukic and he's hobbling just a tiny bit but he's made a very stern stuff he'll be okay 22 is Dorida. Czech Republic, I mean, definitely their energy appeared sapped, their heads appeared dropped, but that goal has given them a new belief. Let's see what Plashil could do there. Picks up Rosicki. Can he open the door once again? Low ball towards the edge of the penalty area. He was looking for Krejci and he wasn't able to find him. Here comes Chor Luka. Where's he going? The big central defender charging over the halfway line, down the other end, pushes it into the penalty area, races with Hubnik, and Hubnik gets there first to just shield it out of play but that was great for Joluca he has run the length of the pitch well, it was like watching a runaway train wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately he's got to get back now 100 yards so I don't think they'll be running back <laughs> as quickly you, you can always tell when a player is trying to get their breath back as they're running he's in a very erect run he's hardly moving his shoulders he's trying to suck the oxygen in but that was entertaining from veteran Joluca Czech Republic 1 Croatia 2 8 minutes of normal time to play here in Saint Etienne this is the 20th game of Euro 2016 hang on here is Sorel hits the penalty flag is up Skoda tries to hit it anyway it wouldn't have counted they were offside but they're making more chances now in the, in the closing minutes than they've done all game the Czech Republic well Connor, what they're doing the Czech Republic is going direct up to Skoda and Sorel they're not allowing the Czech Republic to win any clean headers so the ball is bouncing if they win the headers bouncing down in their own defensive third they're getting support from the midfield so it's a lot better this is what I talked about make some changes make formation changes try and affect the game Shubisic with the clearance the goalkeeper long into the Czech Republic half Hubinek wins the header Czech Republic regained possession and that's good tracking back there Westernich to win the ball back for Croatia they give it back to the goalkeeper left footed clearance long and up over the halfway line Kadetsebek wins the header Croatia get it back with Kovacic here is Rakitic look at this he's got a way to pass in front of Perisic on the left hand side very nearly worked out across came the hard working Hubnik and he puts it out for a corner but he's such a, an elegant player to watch Rakitic just leaned back as he weighted that ball in front of Perisic and gave him every chance of getting there his touch is delightful isn't it his way to pass is delightful you know, I'm going to give the big centre half hood check a bit of the big number five a bit of credit there because he covered that, covered that well. But you know, Rakitic just got so much class. Rakitic just just never seems hurried on the ball. He's preparing to take this corner from the left hand side. Check comes and check gathers. 
And the Arsenal goalkeeper cheered by his supporters, who, some of whom back on their feet, I see, away to the right-hand side. Again, well, Connor, why did, why did they not leave somebody up front there? Yeah. He's come and taken it. You know, you've got six minutes, leave a couple up yeah. from the corner. He's come and gathered the ball and there's no one up front. Here's Perisic again, chasing and scampering down the left-hand side, gets to the ball ahead of the byline. Now he looks up for support. Good run into the penalty area by Brozovic, but he couldn't get the shot on target. And it's out for yet another corner. I think, I think you know, they're back in it to an extent, Czech Republic here, to make things interesting in, in terms of it, it was one-way traffic and it was a very, very well-worked goal but it still doesn't mask that this has been, a, no. on, on the whole, a poor performance from the Czechs. Yeah, it, you know, even if they did somehow manage to squirm an equaliser, you know, the, Co- the Croatian team be walking off the pitch, scratching their heads, wondering how we have we drawn this game. It, it, it is not unrealistic that Croatia should have scored four or five. Here is Rakitic, corner from the left. This one's delivered in low, and Vida tried a diving header, but he couldn't direct it on target. And he's all smiles as he gets up and runs back. And, uh, and the Czech Republic are going to have a final throw of the dice here. Might as well go for it. The veteran, Jaroslav Plaschil, will come off. And they're going to bring on a striker in this place, Tomasz Netzid. Netzid, who started the last game, will come on here for the last five minutes. Oh dear, well hang on a minute Croatia are throwing lit flares onto the pitch There must be 10, 12, 14 of them Well, there is something going on in amongst the supporters there And these are images we do not want to see Spectators trying to move away from an area Where these flares have been lit So, in amongst Croatia fans There's no evidence of of trouble between rival spectators if you like but someone has lit these flares and thrown them on the pitch and now uh, a white sheet has been held up with some message and you would imagine that they've been trying to get the attention here to hold up this board I've, I've no idea it's written in Croatian I don't know what it says but but something there uh, yeah it's just not nice either. people are trying to move away and, and I don't know whether they're just I presume they're just trying to go away from where the flare there's, there's one flare which looks to have set fire to maybe a seat in the stand because the the colour has changed a bit there maybe it's just the, oh, oh dear well no this is not good a firework has gone off right beside one of the the, the staff in the stadium who's working to, to remove them from the pitch well I was thinking that was dangerous as they came in they're wearing protective gear but they're picking up these fireworks with their hands albeit in gloves and it boomed and that must have deafened that individual as he picked up the the thing he's back on his feet here but these are terrible scenes as you know that loud bang made me jump here I'm this far away from it imagine what that was like to be right beside it and there is now a a vacant gap amidst about 150 seats which have all been vacated away from and Croatia fans leaving that space because someone has decided they had to release these fireworks it, it's, a, it's a funny scene Jerry Tiger <laughs> that put the frighteners up me I've got no, to say no, uh, no, there haven't, is, they had, haven't they had disciplinary problems no, the no, there's trouble here there is trouble and, and I you know I don't know whether it's just someone's upset you know is it a political message has been lifted up or maybe they're just upset that, that the firework had been released but people now are, are moving in all sorts of directions and, and not in a nice crazy, way crazy no I'm, I'm, I'm not liking the look of this different different groups are are manoeuvring it's very difficult to understand the ebb and the flow of it but you know it's always worrying when you see large groups of people having to move in a confined space in large numbers and and certainly one or two people have fallen over seats here I mentioned early on in the commentary how it is a a stadium with very steep edges and you know no there is trouble now yeah skirmishes are breaking out inside the stadium amongst the Croatia supporters this is Five Live from the BBC in Santa Etienne we are not missing any football here play has been stopped some time ago we have had fireworks lit and exploding on the pitch Uh, we are very fortunate not to have a member of the safety staff who was clearing away those fireworks injured just as he picked up an item it exploded in his hand it propelled him away from it with a, a very large boom and there is still skirmishes taking place amidst what appears to be rival Croatia supporters. There's individuals launching themselves up steps and clashing, and this now is 
very familiar to the scenes we saw in Marseille when England played Russia. It started out as just a small event. It's grown and grown and grown. And there are still ongoing fist fights taking place. People kicking out at people. Individuals falling over seats. I can't see much of a security presence here. There are there are stewards in their bright day glow jackets, but I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to do. Massively outnumbered. I can only see what. What are we talking here, Jerry? Eight or nine high vis jackets in there amidst thousands of Croatian fans. And, and yes, there's not thousands of them involved in these skirmishes, but but there's a lot of people involved. Yeah, it's it's terrible scenes here. Terrible. And I'll go back. I think I'm sure the Croatian fans in the qualifying campaign. Uh, we're banned from away games because they're, they're renowned for causing trouble. But they're winning the game. Well, this is it. it. It's in amongst themselves. It doesn't seem to be an issue of segregation. And, and Croatian fans throwing these fireworks on the pitch. It's clearly from a Croatian part of the ground. And then, well, I, I still think that this sheet that has been held up, because when everyone moved out of the way... The people holding that sheet stayed in the middle, and I'm, I'm just wonder if it's got a political message on it or something like that, which has then upset some other Croatian supporters who then wanted to get involved. But it seems that we hoped we had maybe seen the end of, especially inside the stadiums at Euro 2016, as play now gets back underway. Um, and, you know, those scenes in Marseille happened at the end of the match. This is bizarre because now we've got football taking place and still unrest. In the, I'm looking to the left and I can still see disputes and issues and people squaring up to each other and, and I'm presuming that there are individuals in these dark shirts it's difficult to make out but I imagine they might be security personnel play back underway throw in for the Czech Republic I'll tell you don't really worry now oh no no the trouble is really flaring up again we've got tens of people jumping over seats trying to get to other groups and, and play continuing. If the Czech Republic were to get an equaliser, you would really fear for what's going on. Still no real evidence of riot police of that nature. We've just got what you would call civilian security staff, those who work as stewards in the stadium. Play is continuing, but it's difficult to concentrate on that. Here is Kovacevic. He shoots on the edge of the area. Hubnik makes a block in the penalty area. And there is still a lot of trouble in the stadium while play is resuming. This is like going back 30 years, Jeremy Target. We never thought we'd see this again. Oh, it's scary. Uh, no, it's not only that, but they're fighting among themselves. That's What is going on? Well, now a line of riot police have come and are lined up to make sure that nobody gets on the pitch. They're protecting the perimeter along the pitch, but they're not going in no. amongst the seats to where the trouble is. They're not going in to break it up. Things calming down a little bit now in terms of I don't see any active fist fights. I see a lot of people moving for the exit, and there must be so many innocent yeah. people in there who've just come to watch football and wonder how in the name, you know, how they've ended up in the middle of all this, and they just want to get out of it. It's only it is you've got to say it's only twenty or thirty people that are causing this uproar. Play continuing. Free kick into the penalty area, scooped over the top by Choluka. Out for a corner. This appeals for a penalty. Yellow card has been shown to Vida. It won't be a penalty. Yellow card. Or will it be? Yeah, can you, you can't give a yellow card and not a penalty, well, surely. It's going to be a penalty. Well, he didn't point to the spot for some time, but Mark Clattenburg had sensationally given a penalty to the Czech Republic. And this game, which seemed to be just the most routine game with Croatia leading 2-0, when it all done and dusted, a handball by Vida has presented the Czech Republic with a chance to get an equaliser. And these Croatia supporters who have caused this problem, well, it's clearly affected their team now. And a game that they were winning so comfortably could be about to become 2-2. Tomasz Netzid, the man who's only recently come on as a substitute. He's hardly had a kick in open play. He will be the man to take the penalty. What sensational scenes. He scores! It's 2-2. And I have never seen the likes of this. Over the last 10 minutes in Saint-Étienne, this game has turned on its head in so many ways. A mood of people enjoying football has turned to fear with skirmishes and some nasty-looking violence in the stands. And a Czech Republic team, who looked hapless and out of it, have suddenly come back and made it 2-2. This is what has happened this, here, Jerry. I do not this, understand. It's total madness. Total, total madness. Croatia absolutely cruising. It's now 2-2. I am going to give 
a lot of credit to the two substitutes that have come on for the Czech Republic. Skoda and Sorrell, because they have been an absolute nightmare to deal with. And now you've seen Vida clearly handle the ball as he's going up to try and clear it with his head. Mark Klappenberg got that spot on. Great decision, Mark Klappenberg. But this is just crazy, the whole thing. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's 2-2. Fourth official has got the board in his hand. It's very difficult to work out how much time we still have normal time to go here because obviously play was stopped for all these skirmishes not just sort of you know time added on for stoppages as such I mean the game was, was halted so presumably we are now coming to what would have been the 90 minutes and the officials are preparing the board and we'll see what will be added on but with this this big vacant I mean it's, it's a packed stadium here in saint Etienne. there's now a big empty space of seats where initially the trouble appeared to be caused by fireworks let off. I mean, there's actually, a, there's a mark of the pitch. I don't know if it was that caused from a tackle run or actually from a firework on the pitch. They, they had a bucket where they were burning the Sand flares out. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's probably what there is from. Yeah. I think the, the explosion came uh, closer to the touchline, but it was an almighty bang. Yeah. Well, Croatia are preparing to, to make a change here. We have no idea what is left to go in this game the official stadium clock has gone past 90 minutes a long time ago it's 2-2 in a game that Croatia completely dominated until first of all the goal from Skoda after 76 minutes then the penalty scored by Netzid and I I, I mean in all my years I've never seen a team come down from, from this far behind in, in terms of performance to somehow be back on level terms and the bizarre circumstance of the Croatia fans who had been winning causing yeah. the trouble and then their team struggling ever since play gets back underway just, just astonishing astonishing scenes here so activity down to the technical area Croatia who appeared to have the points in the bag suddenly chasing a winner once again and just to say it is now Curry looking calm and under control in that predominantly Croatian area to our left hand side many supporters will have left I'm sure of that and there are empty seats but no more evidence of, of any slogans being held up or any skirmishes taking place some semblance of calm no calm on the pitch mind you and the change with Gordon Schildenfeld coming on in place of Ivan Rakitic so Croatia taking off Rakitic late on here throw in from the right hand side by Kadetsebek tell you what if Czech Republic get a winner here shot snapped down by Skoda picked up by Shubacic the goalkeeper he pulls it out underarm to Serna on the right hand side what will Serna be thinking all of this his father oh. passing away in the week his tears during the national anthem he's the Croatia captain the team dominating for 75 minutes 2-0 up suddenly mayhem and the team now back on level terms Perisic runs to the corner flag on the left. Oh, a bit of frustration spilling over as he kicks out at Kadetza Beck. Mark Clattenburg doesn't take any further action. It's just a free kick. Still no sign up. No. Again, we go on about Roy Hodgson making changes yesterday for against Wales, but the two changes the Czech Republic boss has made have been absolutely outstanding. They've absolutely terrorised the Croatian back line. Just by playing a bit more direct and showing a bit more rump and having a bit more about them well it's unclear here in terms of our timings in Saint-Étienne but with a my clock 98 minutes now played but that won't have included you know not just for stoppages but actually a halt of the game a suspension of play here uh, for that trouble and the fireworks on the pitch and it's uh, down the right hand side good work from Sural wins a corner from the Czech Republic Croatia have been rattled it it would be impossible for them not to be with the scenes yeah. we have seen here amongst Croatian supporters clearly affecting their team can the Czech Republic go and win it now well they need to get a grip of, they need to get a grip of this corner here it comes taken short initially played in by Dorina towards the back post Sural fell to his knees couldn't get a connection but the last touch was off a Croatian player it's another corner to the Czech Republic you need your leaders in the team now to defend this corner and Croatia don't seem to have any they're all at sea at the minute they're sixes and sevens what? This just put this in the middle the keeper's all over the place he doesn't know where he's coming or going 
It's bedlam. It's absolute bedlam. What a finish to the game. Here comes the corner. Swung in. Mandzukic back helping out the defence. Does enough to get it out of the penalty area. Kovacevic now to Brozovic. He can't get it under his spell. Suddenly the Czech Republic are finding the little 50-50 things are going their way. Excellent control on the left wing by Vrshalko. Sends it a really good cross. Oh, it was close to Netsid and he couldn't finish inside the six-yard box. And the referee has blown the whistle anyway. And that's a free kick out for Croatia. I think it was shield and fell into the game. I think it was shield and fell with that defensive header. That was a top draw defensive header from the substitute. You can see why he's come on. The managers have the Serb, uh, the Croatia managers having a panic up. And there you should why he brought uh, shield and fell on. He's made an absolute great defensive header under pressure. Czech Republic two, Croatia two, but that doesn't tell the half of it. Full time whistle has just been blown by Mark Lattenberg it is finished 2-2 that is the strangest end to a game I think I have ever seen Croatia will be likely to face a punishment from UEFA following the disturbances we have seen here in the crowd Croatia fans appearing to get into battles with each other certainly I mean there was an organised sense to how it happened it wasn't one or two fireworks being thrown on the pitch this was an event it was planned at a particular moment several people got involved a huge banner was held up with a slogan I'm guessing sort of 12, 14 something like that bright red flares still burning were thrown onto the playing surface a, a really nasty moment the moment I really didn't like Jerry was when the you know the, the, the guy who's, who's helping security and, and help coming out to remove it from the pitch when the, the firework explodes as he picks it up he is very lucky not to have picked up a serious injury there and then for a long time the scuffles continue, the fist fights, and you just want someone's going to get trampled on here. And scenes so reminiscent of what we saw in Marseille in that England Russia game. Yeah, you know, it's astonishing scenes. As you said, that could have been a hell of a different story for, for the security guy who was helping to clear those flares up. It was a massive boom. And to be fair, he's probably had just had enough time to get it into one of those sand buckets, but it still made a massive explosion. He was obviously startled because he ran across to his other, uh, the other stewards who sort of gathered him and, and sort of rushed, rushed him away. away. Yeah, yeah, almost a military manoeuvre, get him away, yeah. And yeah. within two minutes, you know, they, they, they've scored and they've equalised. Yeah, well, let's go back to, to Dan Walker in the studio. Really, really bizarre scenes here, Dan. And somehow, with victory appearing to be not just in the bag, but so comfortably in the bag, Croatia have thrown it away here. It finishes 2-2. They must settle for a draw, and this is definitely not the last we've heard of this.